Welcome to How to Rock the Stage Show, a show committed to equipping you to hone your media skills better to stand out from the crowd as a go-to expert in your field. Each week, Rich Montreger interviews top leaders, influencers, authors, speakers, podcasters, and media professionals about how to leverage media best to help you shine brighter on camera and stage as a go-to expert. Now, here's your host, The Trigger, Rich Von Trigger. Welcome back to another edition of Rock the Stage Show. It's great to have you with us on this Wednesday night, 7 p.m. Eastern Time, every Wednesday night. We're streaming and giving you know, amazing interviews, insights with super rock star guests, Great to be back here once again. And tonight we're going to get into a topic that I absolutely love. If you've been watching the show very long, you know I love to play, tease, always have a smile on my face, laughter. And tonight we're probably going to have a couple good laughs. Go get ready for it because we have, well, we'll let you know about that in just a minute. <laughs> First, we do want to thank our amazing sponsors that make this all possible each and every Wednesday, Autovita Studios. Autovita Studios has a very experienced team paired with their state-of-the-art remote recording process and it brings your message to the market even faster they work with you to produce your audio books your podcasts and they help you distribute it into the wide marketplace out there for more information about autovita studios you can just simply go to autovitastudios.com that's autovitastudios.com and tonight we do want to give a special shout out it's a happy birthday time here on rock the stage and for our team that makes this all possible to our show producer and celebrity wrangler handler robert happy birthday to you robert robert is the man behind the scenes he helps me book and bring some of these high level amazing artists authors speakers actors he's been in the business for a very long time we will not reveal that here but he's the one that helped make our guest tonight appear tonight on rock the stage show happy birthday to you my friend robert and again we're in for a great show so Five ways to get more laughter in your life. We all need more laughter. We all need more joy. We need to have more good time. Alan Klein is the world's only jolliest, and he is the award-winning speaker and author of 30 books, including the best-selling author book of The Healing Power of Humor. He is also a former expert on how to cure baldness. As you can tell, he and I need to have a conversation. Here's Alan Klein. Welcome to How the Rock the Stage Show tonight. Hi. I guess we go to the same hairdresser, huh? <laughs> it's the reverse hair man for club, right? <laughs> yeah, yeah. And uh, I also want to wish Robert a very happy birthday. How long have you known Robert? Because he, he had you on the list really fast when Robert and I started to work together. You're like, I got to get this guy on. Yeah, well, we know each other from the National Speakers Association and also from the Association for Applied and Therapeutic Humor. Yes, there is an association <laughs> that focuses on laughter and humor and the benefits and the scientific uh, research of why we should get more laughter and humor in our life. So Robert and I met there one year, um, and every, I don't know how many years ago. I don't even know how old I am, so... <laughs> It's hard to me to remember how long ago that was, but it was a long time ago. That's awesome. Right there out of the gate, we just learned something new. I did not know there was an association out there. I'm a part of the National Speakers Association. So, hey, here we are, NSA brothers already. Right, right, yeah. So let's talk a little bit about your authorship. Let's talk a little bit about your book because your first book, The Healing Power of Humor, is 40-plus printings now that's staggering first of all congratulations it's been Thank translated you. into 11 foreign languages why do you even write the book you know i can't read any of those languages <laughs> except english um but they look really great <laughs> yeah. um when i when i look at them but i can't even read the titles but i think it's my book they tell me it's my book. they tell you it's your book yeah so i i i i take that for their word. But uh, <laughs> um, so, you know, I got, I got into this, um, what some people will call a tragedy. My wife died at the age of 34. And she had a, a rare liver disease. There was no cure. And I remember we laughed a lot together, Rich. 
you know, we were married 11 years and people would say, uh, or people around us would be, be our friends would, a number of them would be divorced or getting divorced or separating. And we kept questioning, why are we still together? And one of the main reasons is was because we laughed together. Um, she said, I made her laugh. I thought I was a very serious person, <laughs> but to her, she said, I made her laugh. And to me, the reason I gave her was because it was always an adventure being with her. She was a gourmet cook. And I never knew when I came home from work, if there'd be a quiet candlelight dinner for two set, you know, an incredible gourmet meal. Or she had suddenly decided oh, it would be nice to have like 30 people over for a buffet dinner that night. <laughs> and, uh, so I love the adventure. I was a pretty quiet guy. And uh, I just love she kind of opened me up to the world and to joy and to laughter and to adventure. And um, then, unfortunately, she passed away. So right out of the shoot you and I have an overlap here and mm -hmm. Robert never brought this up. It's not even when I prep notes, I went through liver failure. Mm -hmm. I nearly passed away. Wow. Um, I have a liver transplant. So right away, deep wow. connection there. I understand just by knowing the scope of this and my doctors, my nurses said, you're the funniest guy who's dying over and over and over again. And that was one of my secrets. It kept asking me, why do I have this attitude of joy and stuff? Because I love life, I love people. And even in the darkest of spots, and I'm sure you can speak to this, the darkest of places, the humor helps so much. Over and over and over. But before we go on to that, I just want to say about your liver transplant. Um, my son-in-law's mother had a liver transplant. My wife died. There were no liver transplant, but she wow. died of primary biliary cirrhosis, wow. uh, which was related to the liver. There yes. were no liver transplants. Yeah. And my sister-in-law died of liver cancer. And what blows me away, Rich, is none of those three people in my life all were, died from some sort of liver illness. None of them were related by blood. Um, wow, now that really is amazing because blood often is connected to it's passed down in the blood, the genes. So, yeah, amazing. So, uh, I don't, you know, I don't know what it was, but my wife just got back to our story. Yeah, my wife had a great sense of humor, and I realized after she died how valuable that was. Uh, my keynote, every keynote speaker has like this signature story. And mine is, she was in the hospital with a copy of Play Girl magazine with the male nude centerfold. And she said, hey, Alan, I really like this uh, nude man this month. Can you put it on the wall by the bed over there? And I said, Ellen, it's a hospital. A little risque for that. And she said, well, maybe you're right. Why don't you get the picture and put it on the wall by the bed? And I did that. And things are fine for the first day, fine for the second day. But by the third day, the leaves start shriveling up. <laughs> and uh, revealing what we were trying to conceal. And <laughs> we came over to the hospital and we would start to laugh just remembering that incident. Yep. And it wasn't a lot of laughter. It was five or 10 seconds, 30 seconds. Mm -hmm. But after Ellen died, I realized how it helped me rise above the situation. Yes. How it helped us get a little reprieve, um, get a, a perspective on the situation which humor always does. And so, yeah, after Ellen died, I went back to school, gave up a business, and I studied uh, therapeutic humor. And that became my first book, The Healing Power of Humor. Well, obviously, it took off. Great oh, yeah. success. <laughs> obviously, that. And again, as, as you're talking about this, our viewers and our listeners probably can remember the story of Patch Adams which Patch Adams, of course, broke it to say, no, we're, we're not going to be all serious and doom and gloom. We're going to have some humor, some love, some fun. And he broke the mold. And you now get to live in that space. What's it like to live and pick up that ball with, with your own personal story 
yeah. I'll be this expert of humor now. Well, as Patch Adams, who has given me testimonials for some of my books, and also Norman Cousins, who uh, supposedly healed himself with humor. And he wrote Anatomy of an Illness, where he talks about checking out of a hospital, checking into a hotel, and laughing as much, you know, watching candid camera movies, other movies, Marx Brothers, yes. that helped him to laugh. And he credits taking the medication, yes, but also laughing a lot. Um, yeah. And he credits that with helping him heal. Perfect. Now, yeah. you do have a nickname. <laughs> Jollytologist. Jollytologist. Like proctologist. <laughs> <laughs> Which we're not going to go there right now. But yeah. uh, <laughs> how did you get the nickname? And now it is branded, protected. So how did you get that? Yeah, it is registered, trademarked. Um, how did I get that? Um, when I when I studied humor, uh, got my master's degree, I was actually a jellotologist, G-E-L-O-S. Jellos in, in uh, Greek means laughter. Okay. So I was studying laughter, studying humor. And so I thought nobody knows what jellotologist is. Maybe they think I'd make that wiggly dessert. No, I don't. Um, <laughs> and so I changed it to jolly tologist. And most people could understand a little bit uh, of what that is. Jolly tologist. I love it. Yeah. Um, again, and even that adds humor because people don't get it right. They don't understand it. So right away with everything you do, you are tying humor into you, your brand, your personal stories which I love that it's not just what you say or do, it's really who you are, right? Oh, exactly. And, you know, just, just having that title, it opens so many doors because people want to know what is that? You Absolutely. know, what do you do? And immediately, you know, I'm sitting next to someone on the plane. I tell them what I do. Um, we exchange cards. They then hire me to their conference just because of that one word. It's so amazing. I, you know, any listeners or any of your followers that want to get into the speaking business or even the writing business, mm -hmm. come up with some, some yeah. memorable word or phrase. So by looking at some of your material, checking up on you a little bit, you also clarify there's a difference between humor and laughter and people usually just blend it all together as one big thing but you kind of dissect that could you could you explain some of that for us well i belong to another association called the international society of humor studies and they're all academia people so if you ask them that question they would go on for two hours <laughs> about the difference <laughs> between humor and laughter <laughs> <laughs> I'm very simple. You know, I love the research. I love all the technical terms, but I want to keep things simple because most people don't know the other stuff. So for me, um, laughter is a physical manifestation of finding something funny or finding something humorous. You know, so if, if, if you find something humorous, physically, what do you do? You laugh. So is that one of those things where we inappropriately laugh sometimes? Because we find it funny, the world doesn't find it funny, but sometimes it just naturally comes popping out of us. Is, is that some of it too? Could be, you know, I, I think everyone's funny bone is in a different place. And sometimes you'll connect with someone like my daughter, you know, we laugh a lot together. Mm -hmm. uh, we find the same things funny. Other times, you know, I have friends that, Alan, you, you're nutty. Why are you, you know, that's not funny. <laughs> so one of my points is hang around with people that help you to laugh or comedies that uh, you really like that make you to laugh or, yes. or sitcoms. Yeah. One of the ways to get more laughter in your life. Yeah, be around it. Get more of it in your life, but identify what makes you laugh first. Do do, do do people ever approach you and say, hey, Alan, it's time to grow up. All this laughter, all this humor <laughs> stuff. Alan, can, can you please just act your age? Has, has, has that ever happened? 
a lot. Yes. <laughs> but my thing is, I think we need to grow down. You know, we've become so serious. And it, I think it's kind of a tragic. And I walk down the street, I used to be able to smile at people and say hello to them. And now they're all on their phones, right? Yes. I yes. don't get any eye contact. Mm. Um, you know, we're, we're here for a short time. Mm -hmm. We need to enjoy ourselves. Why else are we here? You know, but I think to do some good in the world yeah. and whatever, whatever you do and to enjoy each other and create memorable moments with each other um, and to laugh with each other. Well, and again, going back to the pain side of things, some of the best funerals, wakes I've been a part of is the humor stories. And they just, they start multiplying and multiplying. And instead of grieving, you now have that joy of a great life, a great memory, a great person. And a lot of it is through the gateway of humor to both deal with it, address it, and get it on the table in a safe way. Do you feel the same way? Is that part of why this yeah. works? I, I used to be a hospice volunteer. And one of the things I would try to work with my volunteers was, yes, it's sad. You lost your loved one. You know, I lost my loved one. It was not a very happy time. But, I, you know, I had a 10-year-old daughter. And what I realized is a couple of things. One was to want what I don't have is to waste what I do have. So first was focus on, I'll say that again. Yeah. To want what I don't have is to waste what I do have. There's a soundbite, everybody, right there. We talk about sound bites. We're at the stage. There's one right there. <laughs> oh. see, see, we're celebrating it. <laughs> All right. Great. I love it. So, you know, yes, I lost my wife, but I still had my daughter. I still had my house. I still had my job. I still had my friends. I could still laugh. Yes, I cried a lot, but I could still laugh and enjoy life. And I thought, how would my wife want me to continue with my daughter? Would she want me to be morose and sad all the time? No, she'd want me to enjoy my daughter and have a good time together. So speaking so, about children... Yeah. Were you a funny child growing up? Did, did you have the funny bone when you were young? Or were you like me where you were the joke? <laughs> uh, yes. I, you know, another thing we have in common. I was very serious. I, I, actually, it was my wife that helped me um, enjoy life more and come out of my shell. In fact, I have framed. She gave me a little boy coming out of a snail shell. And I look at that. That was me. <laughs> that was me. And she had this theory. I love this theory. She said, well, you don't get in your childhood. You often get as uh, later on as an adult. Yeah. And that was so true for me. I was so serious as a child. It was also World War II when I grew up. So there was a lot of serious stuff around me. Yeah. But I was very serious. And then when I met her and we played a lot together, we laughed a lot together. That just totally changed my life, my world. And now it's, you know, Ambassador of Light. It's my job, I feel, to help the world, to help other people lighten up. So Ambassador of Light, tell us about that nickname, that brand, because <laughs> it sounds like uplifting and fun. And what is this? Well, I didn't, you know, that only came about a couple of years ago. I was in a class, and I have it on my wall, actually, where you do a collage. Um, I forget what they call it, but it's a collage of things you put together. Mm -hmm. And mine all had light things. I'm looking at it now. It has uh, light bulbs. It has candles. It has Christmas lights. Um, it has wow. gold, radiating, sunlight. And when I looked at, and I had a picture of me as five years old, when I was five years old, and I realized because that child was so serious, I surrounded myself on this collage with light. And what I'm doing now is, you know, a lot of my books is uh, yeah. all, all dealing with aspects, not of humor, laughter so much, but of lightening up, of enjoying life. Um, like my book on um, embracing life after loss. Uh -huh. It's about how the five stages of going from loss to laughter. Well, so let's talk about five stages. We got five stages to cover here tonight. Five right. ways to get more laughter in your life. We could all use more laughter, I think, in our world. So I think everyone would 
agree with that. So you want to break these steps down a little bit for us here? What's what's number yeah, one? So I, if you just remember the one word, hopefully you'll remember those five steps. And guess what the word is? Laugh, L-A-U-G-H. <laughs> so the first way to get more laughter in your life is to let go. Because if you're holding on to anything, if you're upset about anything, you cannot laugh about it. So unfortunately, we're not in a room where everybody has a balloon. But when I have done keynote speeches, like 500,000 people in a room, everyone gets a balloon. So, and you think about something you're not letting go of. So Rick, give me some little thing you're not letting go of. Uh, my bank Ooh. account. Your bank account. <laughs> right, it's a little thing, right? Yeah. So maybe bit. you get a little upset. It's a little, I'm assuming it's a little too low, not too high. <laughs> yeah, right, yeah. So you'd blow that in the balloon. Rick's low bank account. Rich is low. And, and your name is Rich. <laughs> All right. Hold on. I'm setting you up for good stuff here tonight, Alan. Come on. <laughs> there we go. Let's look at that. So hold on. <laughs> take take two, everybody. Okay, so then you say, I'm going to let go of whatever is in this balloon and this rich yep. right, low bank account, and you let it go. Now you can't see that because it didn't come in view, but imagine looking at the balloon flying around the room, or if you're with a room of say 500 people and oh, my 500 goodness. balloons yeah. flying around the room. Letting go of people's stress. So have a balloon around whenever you're stressed out and start to let go. That's a great visualization because it is. And it will cause the room to laugh. It will right. cause them exactly. to not just exactly. do it, remember it, but right. they're actually going to experience it. Which is what I love because people, when they hear that I'm a jollytologist, first thing they'll often say is, tell me a joke. And my thing is... Humor is not all about jokes. It's great if you can. In my workshops, I ask people how many could tell a good joke. Nearly only 5% say they could tell a joke well out of 100 yes. people. So it's the other little things that I focus on. So the second thing is change your attitude. You know, gotcha. Victor Frankl was in a concentration camp and found humor because he said it's the way of changing my attitude. I could not change the situation. I could change my attitude. So he, you look at things differently. You're in a traffic jam. What I love in a traffic jam to change my attitude. I always have a jar of bubbles in my car. I roll down the window and I blow bubbles out the window. <laughs> okay. Where do you live? <laughs> San Francisco. <laughs> People got to love you. And you're like, San Francisco, going across the Bay, Bay Bridge, blowing bubbles. That's got to right, be a right. hoot. Right. And you know what? It not only helps me, but people around me are looking yeah. where they're coming from. They start to smile. I've not only relieved my traffic jam stress, yes. I relieve their traffic jam stress. You know, going back to the whole medicine thing at the beginning, you literally should have a medicine bottle, bubble jar, and brand and give away a bubble jar that looks like a medicine jar and do your whole laughter and healing riff and give them away. Yeah. There's well, a free one, marketing strategy. <laughs> one thing I do in my workshops, and that takes us to the third letter, L-A-U, which is not you, it's Y-O-U, because you need to go find ways to lighten up. As I said, everyone's sense of humor is a little different. What you think is funny. I don't think Don Rickles is so funny. Thousands of people love Don Rickles, so it's not my kind of humor. So one thing I do hand out, Rick, and I probably have handed out, I don't know, 60, 75,000 of these, is red clown noses. <laughs> yes, yes. And, um, you know, I do a whole process. I These are in a package. People don't see it. I ask them to think about some negative thing in their life, keep their eyes closed, open the packet, put this on their nose. Look around the room. What happens? People start to laugh at the negative things they were thinking about. So, so laughter is contagious. And you're demonstrating that over and over is that the nose, the balloons, 
it really becomes a very infectious, contagious thing, and you really can't contain it. Right. And you don't have to tell jokes. <laughs> you don't have to know a joke. You don't have to know how to do a punchline. That's why I love props. You know, yeah. I, used to, I don't think we talked about that. I used to design Captain Kangaroo when I worked. Some of your listeners may know who that is. Younger ones may not. But children's show. And I learned all about props on the children's show. They used a lot of, you know, kids use a lot of toys, props. Um, so I thought, why not adults do that too? So we're up to the fourth letter, L, let go, A, attitude, U, I, O, U, need to G, go do it. Go find some of the, you know, I can't tell you what to go get because I don't know your sense of humor. But you need to go get some of these things. You know, one thing I do, just photos that, that lift you up. It yeah. doesn't have to be fall down laughter, but my daughter, when she was a teenager, she wanted a cream pie thrown in her face. <laughs> <laughs> so I just had that on my desk and, you know, I get a spam call or something. I look at that and I lighten up. It's just, I can't help it. Um, yes. So, how, you know, my dog, this is when my dog was a puppy. I mean, look at that. <laughs> I lighten up. Yes. So fine. They don't have to be fall down laughter, but something that helps you lighten up. Well, that's all you need. And for me, at least, and again, you probably know more about the clinical side, but when I laugh, my body changes and I, uh, my breathing opens up. Everything about me physically, chemically changes. How much of an impact does that have by having these things that you could pull on up? to help you naturally recycle and do that. Is that really medically helpful? It's laughter. You know, when you laugh heartily, you get fresh air in your lungs. Stale air goes out of your lungs. You're oxygenating your blood. So your brain is thinking clearer. Yeah. Um, there's all kinds of other physical attributes when you are laughing heartily. Um, so, yeah, I mean, we think it's frivolous. We think, well, telling a joke or putting this on, you know, it's a frivolous thing. You know, I know people that use this in the office to start a uh, staff meeting. <laughs> it starts, it's on a light note. Um, yeah. I know a parent who uses it when they wake up their kids in the morning, <laughs> you know. And the well, at my wedding, we're backstage. We're getting there. We're, we're all lined up. My cousins, my brother, and so we're, we're all ready to go. Nothing on their faces. We walk through the door one by one by one, and they all put on a clown nose. All right. One by one. <laughs> As we go to the altar to say my vows, they're all wearing clown noses. That's how funny and serious our family was. Yeah. Yeah. No, and that, you know, wedding days are really serious. I won't go into mine, but all these complaining relatives, they didn't want to sit with another relatives because they were fighting with them. <laughs> you know, I can't eat this food and all this stuff. It was really stressful. I wish I knew about this then because I would have done what you've done. Well, and here we are years later. And my father was a judge and a lawyer, very serious man. And for the big group photo and my wife at the time, my new bride was saying no more noses. What did they do? They gave my dad a nose. He's the tallest guy in the room, and he pops a nose on right above the two of us behind us. And we have a picture, and it became one of those funny memory things we all yeah. pull out, we all talk about. So it works on many levels. Yeah. Also, I just remembered at my wedding, my wife realized how stressful I was getting because of my relatives. When we cut the cake, instead yeah. of putting it in my mouth, she put it on the top of my head. <laughs> I had to start laughing, right? It just right. broke the spell. Broke the spell. So, so we're down to number five, I think. Yeah, we didn't do five. So let go. Change your attitude. U Y O U need a G. Go do it. And H is open your humor eyes and ears. There is humor all around. One example, Rich. I was in a laundromat recently and there was a sign on the wall and it said, when the machine stops, remove all your clothing, <laughs> which I did. <laughs> so 
25 words or less, L-A-U-G-H. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, again, this is so practical because we find human every single day. Now, what are some tricks maybe to help us remember this? Because people may live in the moment, it's gone, and then how often do people remember the humor, the laughter? Because often we get sucked back in the hard, cold facts of life, and the joy goes right back out the back door. Yeah, well, you know, you need the reminders. Um, the news is not so great today. So no. what are the reminders? What do you have on your refrigerator? What what little toys? I mean, I have toys all here. Someone gave me an Oscar, a fake Oscar once. Well, I jazzed it up a little bit and put a little cutie thing on it. You know, it's nothing major, but mm -hmm. it just helps with a smile. So what are the reminders? What are the things around you? You know, the serious things, the photos. Um, I have a, <laughs> a Dr. Fauci doll here. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, I don't know, just silly little, you know, things um, to help me to remember to lighten up when I'm getting too serious. Because I get serious too, Rich. I know you yeah. don't think I do, but I do. <laughs> uh, yeah. And, and, and you also did a TED Talk. I, I just want to highlight, again, you are diverse in how you present, how you speak. You did a TED Talk, Our Thoughts and Intentions Create Our Reality. By the way, that's gotten over 130,000 views. Yeah, I think it's 133 now or something. So that was so interesting because I got um, from the organization doing it, they wanted me to do a TED Talk on humor, right? Yeah. And I had just had an experience of how our intentions are so important to create our world. And I had a random house had published six, seven, eight of my books and they were closing that division. So for a year and a half, I looked for a new publisher, could not find any. So I wrote out the, and I don't have it right here, but I wrote out this little three by five card that said, the perfect publisher will find me. And I went to a meeting about a year later and um, I heard a man next to me say, he has, he turned around to these two women and he said, you know, they were from a publishing house and he's trying to sell them their book. And I heard him, them over say, we just opened a new division and we're looking for uplifting, motivational, inspirational books. And I thought, wait a minute, the perfect publisher just found me. I turned around, I told them about my books. They said, mail them to me. They handed me their card. Another miracle, my intention um, came true. They, Their office was like eight blocks from where I live. So I walked the books over to them. <laughs> and um, they bought four, they republished four of them. And then later with another publishing company that the editor went on to, they published another four and then another four. Um, and the, all I did was put my energy out in the world that the perfect publisher will find me. Alan it's Klein, a, yeah. I, I, there, there, there's so many nuggets, so many good stuff. And again, just the power of laughter and the, the timing because our world is messed up. The news cycle is not good. There's so much right now that we are compelled to stay in the dark, the dark, the dark. This humor conversation is perfectly timed. I do want to take you back. And you did mention something that I did want to say for the end. Captain Kangaroo. I grew oh. up in Indiana. I grew up watching Kangaroo. I can remember. What did you learn from the captain? Because it was creative. It was directed at children, but he did it in a creative, fun, and humorous ways at time. What did you learn from those times being a part of that? God. But, uh, you know, almost every day I'd be in the control room and they would talk about the redwood trees or uh, snow level in Montana or whatever. And I would learn you know, like stuff I never heard of. Um, but what I learned, I think, personally, was to be more childlike. <laughs> if I wanted to lighten up, and there's another tip for your for your listeners, yeah. be more, there's nothing wrong. I'm not saying be childish. That's not what I'm talking about. Yes. Be childlike, grow down, look at the joy that children get out of the simplest little thing. And, and, 
you know, in Zen, they talk about beginner's mind and be like a child. Be, be, because then you'll, I have another book called The Off Factor, my latest book, but yep. it's about finding the wonder in the world. And that's what children do. And that's why they enjoy the world more. And that's why they giggle a lot. I think it's just so, it's like all new to them. And we could learn so much from growing down. I love, love, love that. <laughs> Alan Klein, here's a link to your website. Everyone hit the QR code, grab the QR code. But what are they going to find when they go check out your website, Alan? Oh, there's resources. There's a list of all my books. There's articles. Um, there's how to send Rich some money so his bank account gets bigger. <laughs> <laughs> no, that's not on there. <laughs> but lots of good stuff, you know, how to get in contact with me if they search real carefully. Yes. Award-winning author. So there's going to be links to your books and things like that. By the way, the, some of the other books we should mention here, Change Your Life, A Little Book of Big Ideas, The Art of Living, Joyfully, You Can Ruin, You Can't Ruin My Day. I well, love the title of that, by the way. Favorite. You Can't Ruin My Day, yeah. You Can't that's Ruin My Day. Favorite. Yeah. And Embrace Life After Loss and the All Factor Growth, which you just mentioned. Again, amazing accomplishments. As we kind of wind down our, our time here, Alan, what would be one of those one or two major points you want to make sure they don't forget, they take away from this? Because humor is so important. I think one, and it ties in with the humor book and the awe book, is set your intention. And my TED Talk, set your intent. When you get out of bed in the morning, what's your intention for the day? Could it be like just find one funny thing that day? How about setting that? Pretty low bar, but one joy thing that brings you joy every day. Um, and then have those reminders. I used to have a feather in my dashboard in my car. It would be a reminder to keep it light. Um, oh, so I like that. And intention. I like that. Keep it light and have a feather. Fantastic. Yeah. yeah. I mean, I can go on and on. I love gratitude, forgiveness. Uh, <laughs> you know, but we. I think we're running out of time. We. Uh, I'll have to come back. That's all I could say. <laughs> <laughs> the Gallytologist is always welcome back here <laughs> once again. Alan Klein is the name. Check out his website we mentioned earlier. And Alan, thanks for the last year tonight. Thank for the great stories, the great insights. You are a wealth of information. And again, thank you for being a part of Rock the Stage. Thank you. Appreciate it. Alan Klein is his name. You do want to check it out. And again, go to his website, check out some of those books, and you know, see his vast wealth of knowledge and information. We do want to thank, once again, our sponsor, Adavita Studios. Adavita is going to take this show, turn it into an audio podcast. But they have an amazing team of people that will help you create your audio podcast, your audio books, put it together in an amazing way and help you get it right out to the market. Check out adavitastudios.com. Thanks to them being a part of this. And, again, we do want to wish our show producer, our show wrangler, Robert, for helping to make this episode possible. He's out there working hard right now. He's getting a lot of more great Dynamite international guests to come and join us on Rock the Stage Show. And again, you want to join us every Wednesday night right here. Come on back and join us for more great conversations and just amazing tips and tricks and insights. You can help you shine on camera, shine on stage, and smile bigger and have a good laugh. I'm the Trigger, Rich Bond Trigger. Thanks for being with us here tonight. We'll see you back here at 7 p.m. Eastern Time next Wednesday night.